We have either <coughs> Charles or Alicia Black. Charles is the father of the owner. Thank you. Give me just a second here. So, Ms. Farr, you'd request this to be heard first. I know we just appointed you last week. Thank you, Your Honor. So, uh, just briefly, um, I have spoke with the child and with uh, Ms. Wenzel, and just very briefly with father. I've tried to reach mother, but her voicemail is full, and I haven't been able to get through to her. Um, there's a couple of issues. One is... Um, I believe we have a U.S. Uh, a, a um, jurisdictional issue. There is a custody order in California. Um, and my understanding is that Ms. Wenzel, once she uh, gets an, an order, intends to go back to California. So I believe that we need to have a conference with California to determine who has jurisdiction before we go any further. Um, are the uh, parents still in California? I am your honor, the father, yes. Okay. So we definitely need to have that jurisdictional conference with the court down there before we can really do much of anything here. In the interim, your honor, um, the child needs uh, some medica mental health medications um, and there's an issue with getting those uh, medications without uh, at least a temporary order in place. I believe that she has enough to last about 10 more days. Okay. It looks like we have mom on the screen as well. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. <laughs> so we don't have an order in this case at all at this point. I do have the ability to enter an order under the temporary jurisdiction um, basis of of the Guardianship Act, as well as under the UCCJEA. I know. I... So, but we do need to have that conference before we could do anything much further. Uh, and that'll have to have court administration set that up with California. So <laughs> I guess my first question, um, this is to the, to, um, the parents, um, Apparently, there's a need for some sort of medication for your child, and they need to have somebody to sign for that, I assume. Is that correct, Ms. Farr? I think that Ms. Ms. Wenzel just needs the authority to um, help the child with her mental health and getting those medications refilled. Okay. So, like, an immediate uh, order, temporary, would probably do that. Okay. And... The uh, child has told me that she is fearful of returning to either parent. She wishes to stay with Ms. Wenzel. Okay. So um, let me hear from the parents. I'm going to start with, <laughs> I apologize, I got a bit of a cough today. Let me start with um, Charles Black. Do you have okay. any, do you have any objection on a, at least until we can get jurisdiction sorted out to allow uh, Ms. Wenzel to assist your daughter with getting any medications she may need? I just want the best for my child. That's all I want right now. Um, she currently does still have Medi-Cal in the state of California. Um, I did, like I said, that this isn't, this isn't like, this is just temporary, correct? Just to, just to get her what this, she needs. This is, we're not, we're, I don't have any authority to do much of anything until we get, we get the jurisdictional sorted out with California. Okay. As long as she gets her meds, it's right now. That's all I really care about. I just want her taking care of. She's a priority number one. Okay. And Ms. Black, what's your thought on that? Uh, you're muted, ma'am, so I'm not getting any audio. For some reason. It doesn't say you're muted, but I'm not hearing anything. Her phone's been messing up, Your Honor, so I'm not sure. I'm sorry? Her phone's been messing up a lot lately, so maybe it's a malfunction or right. something. Ms. Black, if, can you give me either a thumbs up or thumbs down if it's okay to uh -huh. a, a facilitate getting your daughter whatever medication she needs right now? So you're opposed okay. to that. Okay, I'm still not hearing you. I'm not sure what our audio problem is. <laughs> 
Can can you um can you log log out and log back in? Let's see if we can get that audio to work. We'll hold off until we get you back in. <clears throat> Not getting her back on yet, so She may not get back on your honor. She's pretty upset earlier when I spoke with her. Well, she's back on. She's coming back in. Just take sometimes takes a minute to get the technology doing what we want it to do. <clears throat> so Mr. Black, you'd indicated you've you've spoken with her? Yes, sir. And are you able to? Um, I'm sure she would agree with me on 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 the child's health and safety to to have medication. Yes. Because she gave me a thumbs down on that question. That's my concern. Oh, okay. Well, she no. doesn't want our child with her sister at all, and I understand that. But right now, it's all about Bailey, and that's the only thing that needs to be we need to be focusing on is the child's health. You know what I mean? Your Honor, this is Melissa Wenzel. Can I make a statement really quick? Sure. So um, Bailey was previously seen through St. John's Hospital. They had prescribed her medication. So I would not have anything to do in regards to what's prescribed or any say in regards to that. Bailey can work um, directly with Core Health. Um, as long as her insurance information that her mother now states is being provided, that that information be shared with Bailey. And then Bailey could make that appointment for herself and be able to get her medication for herself if her insurance information is given to her. Okay. So at, at this juncture, you do not need a guardianship for her to get the medicine? Is that so in regards to any type of additional needs, we would, but Bailey's also requesting that she have her own insurance information. She had spoken to CPS and CPS states that mom claims that she um, did gain insurance for her in the state of Washington. And so the minor child is also requesting to just be able to have that policy number or whatever the information is based upon the insurance provided to her as well. Okay. Because regardless, we're going to need that information for her to seek any type of medical attention. Okay. So I think we have now, she's now logged back out. I'm not getting her back in. So I think, uh, Mr. Black, based on your, is there a custody order in California? Do you, do you have custody? It's, or custody? it's a, so it's joint custody between me and Alicia Black, my ex-wife. So if they're not in school, they can go with her. If they are in school, they got to stay with that parent until they're not in school. Um, I do have one question for you. Yes, sir. Um, is there a way we could do any kind of welfare check on my daughter? I haven't seen her. I know that uh, Sherry has. But I strongly believe that my daughter is back in California because they don't know anybody in the state of Washington. My ex sister in law, I strongly believe that they are in California and I'm not being told the truth. Your Honor, if I could, um, oops. currently Bailey has reached out to the ESS program um, and she has been assigned a CVAP advocate and she has met with her as recently as yesterday out of Pallets County. We are currently residing in the state of Washington and will continue to remain in the state of Washington until any other jurisdiction is decided. Okay. Ms. Farr, are you able to do a, a check on her? I talked with her yesterday. She is in California. I mean, I'm sorry. She is in Washington and she is fine. She is uh, with Ms. Wenzel and um, she feels safe with Ms. Wenzel. And she is uh, still attending school here. Um, okay. the, one of the concerns about the medication is that, she, that Bailey recently spent 11 days in the hospital and her mother would not respond to approve of medications. Okay. So that's the other reason I, I believe we need an immediate order giving Miss okay. um, Wenzel some authority. Okay. 
Well, based on the information I have, it sounds like sir, oh, she's coming back here. It sounds like you have joint custody, so you would have authority to authorize that. And it sounds like you're you're okay having Miss um, Wenzel kind of help her until we get this sorted. The moment she gets her medication, she took care of it. That's all I care about, Rhonda. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I think, uh, Miss Black, are you? Can you hear me? Again. All right. Looks like you're connected. Can you hear me? I can now hear you. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So well, you you were saying you didn't wish to have anybody uh, assisting your daughter take care of medicine? Um, so I have established um, insurance for Bailey, so she shouldn't need someone to sign for her. Um, I feel Does like if Bailey needs to be on medication, that maybe she should be in a facility because she's not making good choices right now. Is, does she have the insurance information? Um, I'm not able to contact Bailey, but I can get the insurance information to someone representing Bailey. Okay. Well, right now, I that would be Miss Farr because she's the appointed guardian on a or a, a guardian ad litem, essentially, or court visitor. So, are you able to get that information to her? I am. Okay. Um, Okay. It's not, there's a lot of things going on in this case. One is jurisdiction. Um, until I can establish that this court, uh, that Washington has the ability to move forward, which we'll need to do uh, with a conference with California because of the orders out of that state. Um, my concern right now is make sure that we've got whatever Bailey's immediate needs are covered so that if she needs some assistance, someone can assist her with that. Um, So what I'm inclined to do, uh, well, let me, let me see. Ms. Farr, I know you're in another hearing in Clark County. What, how much time would you need to have more information to report back to the court? Uh, about what? Because we would need to do the oh. UCCJEA first. Right. We're going to need to do that. I don't know how, we could probably could do that hopefully next week or, or if we can get um, that organized. Which county is that order out of? Sutter. Sutter County. Okay. Do we have any information on the um, the case number at all? Um, so perhaps one of the parents can share that. I don't have that information. Do either of you have that possibly? I think it might be in my office in my uh, in my dresser. I can work on getting that and and get that information to you. Okay, so just be the court administration so we can contact uh -huh. that court and get that set up. We may be able to, I'll have them reach out today and see if we can determine that regardless. Um, we do have the parents' names, so they may be able to just look it up that way. So um, I guess my thought is maybe to set this out about two weeks so we can get that accomplished. Um and then perhaps I'll be able to speak with both parents uh, within that time period as well and get some more information. Okay. And if we can get the insurance information as far so that, so that can get to Bailey so we can make sure she doesn't run out of any medicine or anything. Um, and then we'll be able to, to, to move this in a, a better direction. I'm not going to order any custodial orders. I am going to authorize um, if if Bailey needs any uh, assistance, an adult to sign something, I'm going to authorize Ms. Wenzel until we get to that hearing to do that. If Ms. If Bailey has her insurance information, given Washington's law, she should be able to access any medical or mental health uh, services uh, without an adult involved, as long as she has that insurance information. So if we can get that to Bailey, um, I'll have my staff work on the jurisdictional conference. We'll get that set up. Hopefully we can do that next week. Um, and then when we come back in two weeks, we'll be able to make some decisions about what we can and can't do. Perfect. And Ms. Black, if you could reach out to me this afternoon, because I have not been able to get through. 
All right. So, Ms. Black, you'll get the insurance information in Ms. Farr. Um, so, am I able to know where Bailey is at in the meantime, since I haven't had any contact with her? She's in Washington, as I understand it. Um, so, will she be staying in Washington until the next hearing? That is my, that's what we would be doing. Okay. She's not going anyplace until we get this sorted. Because I don't Thank know if you. I have any jurisdiction in, to order her to stay here at this point. No, but until the next hearing, she is to stay in Washington State, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll come back on the 26th and I will have my staff get a UCCJEA set up. We will let uh, the parties know about that. Uh, you're welcome to attend that hearing. Those are a Zoom hearing with California. Um, I don't know what day or time that'll be. That'll be whatever we can arrange with their court. So, and I don't know if I'll be doing it, another judge will be doing it. It's just a conference to determine jurisdiction. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Governor. Okay. All right. So I'll get those orders out and then uh, we'll be back on the 26th at 1030. All right. A question, Your Honor, real quick before we leave. Sure. I wrote my statement out. I was not aware that I had to mail it in. Is there an address or anything I can mail that to you guys? Did you, receive, did you receive some paperwork on this case, sir? I did receive the paper from uh, Melissa Wensley, yes, the court documents. I didn't receive any address or nothing to see to there send this. Be, there should be on the summons, there should be the return address. Okay. I'll go through it here shortly, and then if there is, I can send that to that, correct? Correct. Just mail it in? Okay. Yep. I just make sure it's got the case number on it so we make sure we get it in the right place. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. That'll take care of this case for today. Then we're back on the 26th at 1030. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're we welcome. have served the parents. Um, it appears that the mother's present today. And I imagine that the parties, the parents are going to request attorneys. I was going to let the court know that Ellie Cotto had been appointed for the mother in pre-dependency action. Um, and Ms. Cotto indicated uh, that I could let the court know she'd be willing to accept appointment again. Um, in addition to the, the parent situation, I would also ask the court to go ahead and appoint a guardian ad litem today to start an investigation and ask that the court extend the immediate order and set a review hearing down the road. The parties were served out of state, so they have 60 days to respond. Um, so their response period hasn't passed yet and neither parent has filed anything with the court. It appears they're both present today. Um, and then lastly, if the court enters an order extending the immediate um, order, I would ask that the court add some language, uh, specific setting specific visit times. Um, the current order just says it agreed by the parties and there's been um, a lot of conflict back and forth setting visits. And so it would just be easier if the court would just set a time. We would suggest Sundays at 1 p.m. Your Honor, here, my name is Michael Trotter. I represent Trisha Havens. Okay, let me see here. Give me just a second here. So she is the mother? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. So we apparently don't need to appoint her an attorney. So if you're representing her. Yes, Your Honor. And then if I may, um, I'd be requesting a set over. We were retained late yesterday. And so I would need time to review the file. There's some uh, critical considerations that need to be made in this case. And so for that reason, I'm requesting... Your Honor, at least a, a two weeks set over, please, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. I also see a high clap. So, Mr. Clap, can you hear me? All right, sir. Yes. 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 All right. Um, and are you? Would you wish to have an attorney appointed in this case? No, no. Okay. Are you in agreement with what's being requested at this time? Uh, uh, everything is just replacement. I just want to. Uh, uh, I would want uh, my daughter uh, removed from her care. You're, you're kind of breaking up on me a little bit there, sir. Um, So let, let me ask you this. You don't want an attorney. Um, the request... I have an attorney uh, figured out. It's not... Uh, not, not. 
So what, what's been requested today is to set this hearing out two weeks, which would put it to the 26th at 1030, uh, to set up a specific visit time, which sounds like <laughs> the proposal is Sundays at 1. And if you're looking to get yourself your own attorney, then you could have a couple of weeks to get that taken care of or reach out to Ms. Powers to see if you have any other questions. I don't need it. You don't need an attorney? I don't need any help. Are you okay with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting a lot of feedback. I couldn't I couldn't make out the answer there, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. All right. And Mr. Trotter, you're okay. What they, does the Sundays at one o'clock work for you on a temporary basis? I haven't had a chance to consult with my client on that yet, but um Patricia, perhaps if you feel comfortable responding to that are you okay with sunday visits or if not we can talk about it offline um this is I'm only okay for the next two weeks the, just that's for the next two weeks yes she said 1 p.m yes not noon right correct. 1 p.m not noon correct okay Okay. Yeah, just we just we weeks. just drive like three or four hours to get there. So, okay, so I'll extend it out two weeks. That'll give you and your attorney an opportunity to decide how you want to proceed. Uh, Mr. Clapp could either get an attorney or not get an attorney and figure out what he wants to do. Um, leave essentially status quo with the addition of the visit specified for one o'clock on Sundays. Great, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right, so we're back on the twenty sixth at ten thirty then. Does the court want me to send over an order or will you be drafting one? Uh, that'd be really helpful if you could do that. You got a lot of paperwork floating around today, so. I will do that and I'll just email it and um, CC Mr. Trotter and Mr. Clapp as well. Very Thanks. good. And now we need to appoint a, do we need a visitor or a GAL in this case? I think we need a GAL since both parties have already been served. Okay. So uh, do you know who's next on our list for that? Okay. All right. So we'll, I'll, uh, if you, if you want to do an order of appointment and who I've just checked with court administration, who's next on our list. Okay. And we'll get that done. And. And how would the court like GAL fees to be handled at this point? Well, I don't know all the parties income probably to start with, I'll be under okay. court payment, but, um, and then we may review that. Okay. We'll start there. All right. So 26 to 1030, I'll put it, uh, if you want to put that uh, visitation language in the order as well, and then uh, we'll see you all back in two weeks. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that's correct. We had a uh, setting uh, last week. Okay. Your Honor, can you hear me okay? I'm, I don't know why my camera is not on. I can hear you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Uh, there we go. Uh, there, we there we go. Very good. Figured that out. Um, Ms. Winkles is in uh, docket in Wakaikum County and couldn't be here. She asked me to step in and ask for a two-week continuance on this matter, if we could get that so that she can appear on this matter. Okay. I, I guess my question, and I have a problem with that, my, my question is we've got a trial set in August. We're on a temporary guardianship. I don't have a permanent guardianship file or a general guardianship filed. Or maybe I do. No, I don't. I still under. Your Honor, um, this is Melody Parkinson. I'm the guardian in this case. Yes. Um, we didn't do a permanent one because the the goal for Rebecca is to go to her mom's house, and we were hoping to have this completed at the end of the school year, so that she is able to do that. We do have um, an adequate cause hearing for tomorrow for the parenting plan between mom and dad. Okay. And uh, Your Honor, I've just been appointed in the family law matter, the uh, the custody matter between my client and uh, Ms. Ford. 
Um, and uh, uh, so I just got appointed and, and I agree that the matter should be between my client and Ms. Ford and out of this guardianship. Your Honor, this is Tina Day, the court visitor, guardian yeah. ad litem. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Your Honor. What what we need at this point is a temporary minor guardianship order that carries us through trial. If things change after the family law matter, then we could bring this back before the court and resolve it at that point. But to to do something to end or terminate this guardianship at this juncture leaves Rebecca kind of out in the wind with with being in the same circumstances that were um, brought us to this point. Rebecca is in school. She is in a safe and stable environment. She's having all of her medical and emotional needs met. And she's in the process of reestablishing her relationship with her mother. Um, and that is her hope is to be reunited after school ends this summer. But that's a little ways down the road. So at this point, what we truly need is an order extending the emergency through to trial. And then if something happens in the family law matter, we could then bring it back to this docket and have it addressed at that point. Well, my, I guess my concern with that and this, <coughs> I apologize. That's putting us way past the time limits. That is correct. Your Honor, but that's, that's how the, that's how the trial was set on the trial assignment. And no, I, mean, I understand that. I just don't know that I have jurisdiction to enter an extension of this order till August without a regular guardianship filed. If needed, okay. I would file emergency, though. regular petition for a, a guardianship, not just emergency guardianship. I'm sorry? If needed, I will file for the um, guardianship, not just the emergency guardianship. Okay. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't it, it sounds like Ms. Winkles would like to at least have a review in two weeks. It sounds like we've got another case going on the family law side, which may address some of these issues. If I simply extend this out two weeks, we review it in two weeks. And I guess I would ask counsel to look into the time limits under the emergency. When I read, when I was reviewing the statute today, um, an immediate order is a temporary guardianship order in a, it seems to me that probably starts the 60 days running. So I have some questions about the process we've been doing on these cases of, of just extending that ad infinitum. Uh, in any event, if we set, I, I think I clearly can do two weeks and then we come back and we can address either that issue if that's important or maybe it gets resolved in the family law. And then we'll, uh, we'll obviously keep our trial date in August and um, address the orders between now and then next in two weeks Does that work for everybody yes as long as we can have an order that carries us for that two weeks i think that would be appropriate anybody have any objection to extending an order two weeks uh no objection your honor no your honor okay right i'll extend this over the 26th then what are we looking at the 26th as far as that docket is that it was signed and then you just set over the one to this will be the night of so. I'm wondering if we should go over That's going to be a pretty big docket already. Maybe if we went to the second, I'd give three weeks. I think that will work, Your Honor. Uh, and that's, that's fine. That's fine, Your Honor. Yeah, that's fine with me, Your Honor. All right. So I'll do a temporary extension to the third uh, at 1030, and then we will see where we're at. April 2nd. I'm sorry. I was reading my calendar wrong. April 2nd at 10.30. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, You're welcome. There. Thank you. All right. So good morning, ma'am. Um, it looked to me like you had requested this be terminated. Yeah. Not seeing anyone. Uh, I don't see and I don't have a proposed order. I don't think... But if you're simply asking to terminate the guardianship, you're the petitioner, and it uh, looks like it was appropriately served, so I can terminate the guardianship. Okay. All right. I'll sign an order terminating after docket. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Your Honor. Good morning. You are Thank welcome. You, Rogers. Good afternoon. You too. Okay. Yes, so, oh, go ahead. So has has this been served on anybody yet? No. All right. So Your Honor, if I may, um I'm the one that has I have I have uh, custody of Myra. It's mm -hmm. my daughter's <clears throat> daughter and um Emily and Michael, Myra's <clears throat> excuse me, parents are both homeless and they are very hard to find. Um and so um it's it's I don't know how to actually track them down. And that's why Alex and Kelly are having trouble serving them because we can't find them. All right, give me one second. I want to look something up real quick. Um, normally in that situation, we would appoint a, a, um, a court visitor. Let me just double check on that real quick here. All right. So what I can do on this, I can appoint a court visitor. Um, this is, this is an interesting case because we, you've got essentially a, a temporary order Although I'm not sure you need a temporary order because you have custody already in the um, in the third party matter. Um, it's because I'm giving temporary custody to Alex and Kelly. Mm -hmm. I have custody of, like I said, of Myra. Um, her parents haven't done anything they were supposed to do over the last five years. And they're both still active users, but there was some problems here at my home from the paternal grandmother. And um, so I had to pretty much clean house and kick some people out and get stuff done. And to protect Myra, um, I, I need to, I wanted to give temporary custody to Alex and Kelly because they adopted Myra's sister when she was just a baby. Right. I, I think I understand the lay of the land as to kind of where we're at right now. Okay. My, I guess my question is, is that I mean, you as the guardian or as the custodian under the third party custody, which is still a valid order. Obviously the only way we can change that is under a guardianship, which is why you're here. Um, you still have complete control over the child until other than this order that grants that to the boxes. Correct. Um, so, I mean, I can, ex I can do another order, extend this out, appoint a court visitor who can then talk to you about how to go about getting service done. Um, Alex, <laughs> Kelly, would that be helpful to you guys? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, so, so yeah, ahead. so your honor, would we just have to serve Andy then? No. No, they would still need to be served, but she can talk to you about the kind of the process or some other alternatives about how to do that. She also has the ability to re recommend a waiver of service depending on the circumstances, but that has to be done through a court visitor. Okay. So my thought is to appoint a court visitor, maybe set this out three weeks. I'll extend the order out that to that time. Mm -hmm. This is a little, this is an unusual um, circumstance because we're really working by agreement with the custodian. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I mean, we still have to give the parents notice, but I think, I mean, have any of you talked with any attorneys about any of this? Because there may be some other options that might be simpler for what you're trying to do. Okay. We have not talked to an attorney. Mm -hmm. That would probably be useful if you talked with one of the family law attorneys who does guardianship or family law, they may be able to give you some I'm not allowed to give legal advice, but I can tell you to get legal <laughs> advice. Um, <laughs> and that, that simply may, there may be a simpler way to do this than this. Okay. Um, but what I can do, let me, I'm going to go out three weeks because I've got the custodian is here. She's not, okay. I mean, she's not opposed to this. So, um, so I'll set it up to the 2nd of April. 
Let me see here. Um, the right one here gives a second. April 2nd, I'll appoint a court visitor who then can, they'll be in touch with you based on the information we have in the court file as far as contact information. Okay. And then we'll set another hearing at 1030 in three weeks on the 2nd. And uh, in the meantime, if you if you're able to reach out to some of the lawyers who were on here earlier, they do this kind of work. Um, but reach out to somebody, maybe you get some guidance or maybe an, like I said, some alternatives than going through this process. Okay. Okay. Well, right, so, thank you so much. Thank so April so 2nd much. at 1030, and then we'll see where we're at when we get back. Um, who pays the court visitor cost? Um, we have to pick that off our list and I don't have it in front of me right now. Okay. Um, it'll likely be one of the folks who was on earlier <clears throat> I believe it. I think Sherry Farr, and who's our other one? Tina Day. Tina Day or Sherry Farr are probably the ones. Um, but you'll get you'll get a call from somebody. No, one of those two most likely as court mm -hmm. visitor, and they'll ask you some questions and um we'll go from there. We'll from there. Okay. I okay. have one other question, Your Honor. I'm not sure if it matters, um, but on the immediate order, the ex parte order, um, there's no date of guardian appointed does that need to be on there um it says the hearing date but not the date guardian appointed perform gdn no. yeah that that probably was an omission that would have been the date that was signed that would have been march 5th but the new one i'll, I'll make sure that's in there because it'll be the okay. same date okay 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 all right, Thank so we'll see you much. back April 2nd and see if we can get this sorted out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.